Howdy folks, welcome to another beautiful day out here in West Vancouver. Sorry I haven't posted for a while, I've just been very, very busy. And of course the other thing is for the last like eight or nine days it's been raining every day and I didn't want to get wet. And then I'm like, okay, while I'm busy I'll do it later and then it gets dark and, and then I just don't. So here I am, back again. How's it going? Alright, so in today's video we are going to talk about something that I read that's quite interesting. In Ontario, they are now considering to remove the best before dates from groceries. Um, you know, every, everything you buy, whether it's a can of food or a tin of salt, everything has got a best before date on it. And um, it's law in most countries. I know South Africa, you have to have best before dates. In Canada, you have to have best before dates. And they're actually thinking of removing it for the simple reason that it causes an enormous amount of wastage. Because if you think about it, I mean, it's like uh, I saw this thing the other day where this guy had a little a bottle of salt, you know, a little container of Himalayan rock salt. And it's had the best before date like a week in future. And he's like, well, it's a good thing. You know, it's been waiting 7 million years in the earth. And luckily I got it just before it expires because it's got a best before date on it. Now, I understand what the best before dates was for. It is to try and protect people from eating stuff that is not good to eat. But the problem that they reckon is that there is no legislation or testing or anything really much uh, or anything controlled that goes into these best before dates. So what happens is it's just the manufacturers that just slap a best before date on it because they have to have one. Now, I'm not saying they do that, but I'm thinking, I mean, if you were a guy that makes yogurt or anything that you sell and you send it out and you have to put a best before date on it, I would think that you would put a shorter best before date because, you know, then the guy needs to eat it and come by more. Or if it goes past the best before date, he throws it away because that is what most people do. Most people look at a best before date and they go, hey, this thing is already expired. You know, can't eat it, chuck it. And I mean, 90% of the time, that's just nonsense. So apparently Ontario is now considering to remove the best before dates on most stuff. They say things like dairies, they're still thinking about, but you know, cans of food, those things last 10 years. There's no point in putting a six month best before date on it. Um, there's a lot of these things that they are, that, that's just silly. I mean, just for an example, we have the South African shop and we have some stuff that we sell online. Now, I've got Omar Biscuit, Omar Rusks, and they've now got a best before date. So we're heading up to the best before date is the end of January and we still have some left. I mean, by nature of a Rusk, a dried out biscuit, there's nothing that can happen to it. You know, that best of before date is just kind of silly, I guess. But anyway, so I thought that's interesting. I thought I'd tell you about that. Uh, for the rest, life is still good. We're carrying on. Like I said, just very, very busy. It's just chaos. And of course, the other big issue that we've been having, oh man, what a nightmare. So ever since there was that uh, internet outage around here, our internet has sucked. It keeps on dropping and the speeds are slow. You know, after the big snowstorm also, it just kind of, it's just gone to crap. I mean, we've got a 1.5 gigabit um, Shaw slash Rogers internet line and it is just not happening, you know. So uh, they, it's up, but it drops and it's slow and it's just not cool. So I actually called them and I'm like, hey guys, you gotta, you got to sort this out. So they, they had a technician that came over, guy came around and he's like, oh yeah, um, he fixed a few things on the line and then he looks at it and he goes, oh, you know what, the cable running from your house to the, the fiber point where it connects, that cable needs to be replaced because it's really old. You know, being in West Van, those cables have been around for a long time. And... Um, I'm going to put in an order to replace it and that could take two to three weeks before they come around to replace it. So, and then, you know, you can't give me an ETA. Nobody can give me an ETA. They're just like, well, you know, the order is in, they will come when they will come. So that's it. That's where we are at now. 
but it sucks so bad. I actually called them again yesterday or the day before. Complained and they're like, okay, they're sending another technician to come and see if there maybe isn't something else that he can do. But it's a pain, man. And unfortunately, here where we are, we have no other providers that can provide a, a solid internet line. So I've been looking around at a couple of options. I mean, I looked at um, Starlink, but that's $500 to buy the thing. And then like, I don't know, 300 bucks a month for the, the high end one. It's just a little bit too much. And then you've got... Um, TELUS, who is bringing true fiber to our area, which is great, but um, it's only coming in about six months. Currently, if I go to TELUS, I get like 10 megs up and 5 megs down, or five, 10 megs down and 5 megs up. So, I mean, it's like compared to a 1.5 gigabyte line, just doesn't make sense. So, here we are. We're waiting for TELUS to come. I'm pretty sure we'll switch over to them then because they actually have for the same price that we're paying right now for our shoreline, which is one and a half gigabyte down and a hundred megabytes up when it works, TELUS has a three gigabyte down, three gigabyte up pure fiber line that they can install. So that is phenomenal. That is absolutely amazing. I'm just, uh, that would be cool because then we can upload and download stuff very, very quickly. Currently, it is just a struggle oh and then other good news spoke to the landlord uh, a couple of a week or so ago and he said that during the in the current financial climate they have decided not to demolish the house in june when our um, rental expires and we can stay on for another year maybe even two so it doesn't look like we would need to move again and go through the stress of finding a new place to rent. So, I mean, that's absolutely brilliant news. Anyway, folks, it's Friday afternoon. It's not winter, as you can see. Check here. I mean, it's like this has probably been one of the, um, one of the, the mildest winters. Well, I've only been here for three winters, like 21, 22, 23. But anyway, this is probably one of the mildest ones so far. It's, um, it's just like, it's not snowing, it's no ice. There's the, last year, everything was iced up. The driveway, it was a mission going up and down and it was snow all the time. I don't think we actually had ice yet. We had that snowstorm when it snowed a bit and then it was like icy for a couple of days. And after that, it rained and the ice melted and it's all gone. So it's actually been a really, really mild winter. Really, really cool. I was jog jogging with my buddy Stan and we were chatting about, uh, you know, we always chat when we jog, jog. And he was telling me that this winter is actually a more traditional Vancouver winter weather so it's normally Vancouver is a lot milder so the we winters from the last couple of years where it was so cold and icy and snowy was actually not the way it should be this is more the way it should be which is cool because I mean here we are t-shirt beautiful day Friday afternoon probably around three o'clock it is overcast and it will probably rain again it's rained a lot which is cool i like the rain but um yeah you almost have an absolutely beautiful day cheers